stop. Are you a lawyer who works with people over 65? You should know about assessing client capacity. Client capacity is not just important in cases like guardianship. There are standards of capacity in every area of law, including one's ability to enter into a contract, make a will, or get married. We presume capacity and we strive to enhance it if possible using decision-making supports. Capacity is not binary. Someone may understand issues better in the day or be able to make decisions in one area of life while struggling with another, or they could have a reversible medical condition like a UTI, which may have dementia-like symptoms. You may be thinking, I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a doctor, I went to law school because I wasn't good at science. I can't make that determination. And yes, there are cases when someone should be referred to a medical professional, but you can make capacity determinations um, on your own. And in fact, you do it every day without even realizing it. You interview clients, you talk to them extensively, and you decide whether or not to assist them in situations. Model Rule of Professional Conduct 1.14 actually addresses this. It asks lawyers to maintain as much of a normal attorney-client relationship as possible when capacity is diminished and to take protective action if that client is at risk of harm. This summer, in July 2021, the ABA Commission on Law and Aging and the American Psychological Association published their second edition of their Handbook for Lawyers assessments of older adults with diminished capacities. This is a fantastic resource that I encourage any lawyer to consult. It gives suggestions for how to enhance capacity. For example, certain interviewing styles, like presenting each option for a client and listening to their reactions, will ensure that they are better able to understand your information. Decision-making supports can empower a person to make decisions that protect them from harm. Chapter six is about screening for undue influence or when someone uses their power to exploit trust, dependency, and fears of a vulnerable victim. This chapter gives several different rules of thumb and issues to look for when you're speaking to a client and you suspect that they may be a victim of financial exploitation. You will likely find chapter seven very useful. It includes several cognitive, behavioral, and emotional signs of capacity issues. Functioning beyond your office, like your client's ability to perform activities of daily living, are also signs of diminished capacity. You can fill out this attorney assessment worksheet as you work with a new client and assess their capacity. Last, chapters eight and nine discuss referrals to other professionals when you or the court require an assessment and how to understand their report. I encourage you all to print or order this handbook as an enormously useful resource in your practice. <laughs>